Hello and welcome back to my channel V Details. Myself Vikash and this channel is all about auto detailing. Today I have this uh, Kia Sonnet with me and as you can see this is the vehicle. Black pearl finish paint and uh, it's going to be really really interesting to work on this black paint and I'm just so excited and uh, today I'm going to take you through the process. I'm going to show you how I work step by step, how I detail the paint and how I remove the imperfections from the paint and correct every little swirls or scratches or the whatever the imperfection that's on the paint so let me take you through the process so to begin with I have pre-washed the car the whole surface is decontaminated using a clay bar and I have this special paint thickness gauge with me and this is gonna give me digital readings about the thickness of this paint and uh, that is going to help me mentally be prepared about what products what compounds what pads I need to use to correct the imperfections on this paint that a lot more coming up on this episode of financial preserve and spoiler if you're looking for something fancy lights fancy studio or showroom fancy cars and uh, fancy transitions and fancy music that's not going to be in this video this is purely art thank you for watching Here is the Kia Sonnet pearl finish black color it's awesome it looks awesome and uh, I'm just too excited about how it's gonna look after paint correction and ceramic coating and um, I just love working on black cars well it's the paint surface now it's too messy right now as you can see too many swirl marks Ooh, a deep scratch here this one can you see guys really deep well anyway no worries I'm gonna work on that and uh, I accept black cars are really hard to maintain a full-time job but come on guys nothing shines better than black so let's begin well this one is absolutely too deep these scratches whoa too many swirl marks just look around the light reflection as I move along too many swirl marks hologram marks possibly due to showroom polishing uh, maybe the dealership from Kia has, uh, has done a polishing over this paint surface and uh, I suppose that's these rotary marks or buffer trails whatever we call them out of focus okay like you can see uh, too many scratches so many imperfections well that's the challenge here and I love taking challenges too many swirl marks but you know what the paint really looks great and uh, I'm just excited to get it detailed let's begin Here's my paint thickness gauge. Let me start this. This is a digital thickness gauge. You can measure ferrous and non ferrous devices. Whoops, sorry for that noise. Okay, so 123, 115. 111 114 117 how about the edge okay there's little paint in the middle more paint in the edges let's go along this line 101 whoa 
120 whoa. can you see that scratch too deep 128 123 122 120 120 so the average reading is 118 let me measure here also 99 whoa 100 100 okay I was wrong paint is even thinner at the edges too 94 uh, 103 the unevenness of the paint is too much and I just don't understand why there's so much of a difference 10 15 microns, I can understand that, but somewhere the paint is 120 plus, somewhere below 100. Mm, 130, wow, 120, 123, 122. Okay, so one thing I understand. I shouldn't go more aggressive on the edges. 97, 96, 99, 141 okay some edges are thick some edges are thinner what's wrong with Kia yeah. anyway these are all robot painted uh, machine painted that is so of course there will be a variation but uh, I don't get this some areas they are below 110 some above 120s and some below 100 anyway uh, total number of readings I took are 42, minimum is 95.7, maximum is 141 and average reading is 115 microns. So these readings are in microns. So I have set the low to 90, that is anything lower than 90. Um, that's really, really thin paint. And uh, let me clear this one thing. Uh, wait, I have something to demonstrate. Here's my instrument. I'm going to clear the readings. Done. Here I have a non ferrous metal, and I'm going to check the thickness of this metal. You see that? Zero. Because this has nothing coated on it, or uh, it's just the metal. There's nothing coated over it. No paint, no clear coat, nothing. Average thickness of the clear coat that's present on an automotive car is about 50 microns. So, uh, for example, this Kia, uh, this had about 120, 130, 110, 110 microns. Let's consider about the average. So, the average reading I got was 117 microns. Basically, the overall average thickness is 117 microns that is from the metal surface to the um, tip of the sensor so from the metal surface let us consider uh, there's a primer coat then there's a base coat that is color coat and then on top of that we have uh, the clear coat so the overall microns uh, thickness in micron level is 117 microns and uh, here I have a post-it note when I say the paint thickness is less than this post-it note, I literally mean it. And um, let me once again check the thickness of this metal surface. Zero microns. Uh, let me just take this. And uh, now let me check the paint surface. The thickness is 79 microns. 
So average thickness of the clear coat is less than this 79 microns. That is less than this post-it note. This is super thin. So that's why I say go for a paint protection, have a paint protection on your car and uh, that's going to save your paint, it's going to protect your paint from all the environmental defects, uh, dust and debris and uh, probably from rusting and so much more. So coming back to the car, we had the overall thickness at 117 microns, that is the average thickness of the overall panel. So. 117 microns if i break down break down that to uh, layers possibly till 70 to 75 microns would be my base color coat and beyond that anything beyond 75 microns is purely the clear coat and uh, so we had an average of 117 microns then you probably just have about 30 to 35 microns of clear coat left on this paint surface so that's way too thinner than what this post-it note is so there isn't much space for me to correct the defects and um, there isn't much space for you to go uh, keep on repolishing your car or compounding your car's paint surface again and again so that's why we prefer to go for ceramic coatings or any kind of uh, better paint protections on your paint surface and uh, that's going to prevent your paint from many many environmental defects so i have this uh, classic polish from shine supply and uh, rupes da fine finishing compound both are great high performance compounds when it comes to finishing and uh, i love to use both of them mm, i'm going to use either one before and uh, before that, let me tell you that I'm the guy who starts with least aggressive compound and uh, I want to maintain the paint thickness as much as possible as well as removing all the defects. So I'm not going to go with anything heavier compound like classic cut from Shine Supply or uh, I also have a cutting compound from Rupes Zafaya Gloss. But anyway, uh, let's begin with... Rupes. First things first, test spot. Here goes my yellow foam pad, foam finishing pad from Rupes, and my favorite compound from Rupes. A good shake. Let me get my apron. Well, uh, I tried to demonstrate about the paint thicknesses and uh, how thick the clear coat is. I have no idea about how well you guys understood that. Uh, by the way, if you didn't understand anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to figure out a better way to demonstrate and uh, probably make a better video about how about the paint thickness alone. So, that's it. Thank you. A few drops to prime my pad. If I don't prime my pad, I'm probably probably going to scratch um, from the dry spots on the pad.
you should definitely check out the results. Let me grab my tripod. So this is the area here I have done a test spot and uh, these are the results. Can you see the pearls sparkling again? Let me focus and yeah, amazing product. That's the thing I love most about the rupees. Whoa, I'm missing my focus. Okay. Come on, man. Focus. 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 Okay, now I get it. My camera is not able to focus because it has this mirror reflection and it's directly focusing onto the ceiling. I hope now the focus is good. Just check out that light over there and this light over here. Can you see that? Can you see the difference? Let me bring the gimbal a little lower and focus man, focus. Yeah. Now see that light and this light. As I move upwards, you can see the imperfections there. You see the swirls, all those minor scratches. Check out this light. There's no scratches or any swirl marks around here. But as I move on, here we have all these circle scratches are called swirl marks as I bring my focus down they disappear and here it starts focusing back to the ceiling damn it yeah you see okay so overall the product works good I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use Rupes fine polishing compound for the rest of the panel. It's working great. The test test spot results are amazing, and I absolutely love them. The best thing about this compound, here, yeah. the best thing about this compound is that it has amazing cutting performance as well as some great finishing capabilities. I just love this compound. Amazing. We pair it up with perfect pad and perfect tool it's just amazing the results are right here all right let's get back to business it's almost 12 and uh, long way to go whoa totally out of focus yeah I think I should get a new DSLR camera or something like that hmm anyway for time being I'm gonna use my mobile phone itself well great results so I'm gonna continue dividing this panel into six I suppose yeah one two three four five six let's polish Fresh pack, wash. Always use fresh pads. Always. Every time I finish polishing a car, all these pads go to wash and they get back to me. Ready to tame a beast. This is my favorite polisher. Rupes LHS 15 Mark III. A little compound to first prime the pad. I'm going to start working on this side. I'm going to work from inside to outside, and uh, that's the way I usually practice. Let me 
put this in time lapse. So this is the part I polished and I hope you can clearly see the difference. Just look around the light over there and the light over here or here, here, swirl marks, scratches, these are deeper scratches. I think I should go with more aggressive compound over here. Look at these scratches, they are actually too deep to be corrected using a finishing compound. I must go with a more aggressive uh, correction compound on this uh, spot. I'm gonna do a spot correction over here with a more aggressive compound and this is the part I polished this whole thing so I hope you can see the difference it's really clear and yeah look around that line light sorry look around that light and around this light whoa out of focus okay there are too many swirls and scratches over here and there's none over there and I think you can even make out the difference by how more glossy or reflective the paint there it is and versus here. Anyway, uh, let me take you through the process. Thanks for watching until now. Keep watching. So this is blue coast pad by Rupes for correction. This is a heavy cutting pad. I hope you can make this up. Do you get that? The sound? This indicates it's a coarse pad or heavy cutting pad. Whereas uh, a softer foam pad or finishing pad sounds something like this. Look at this. I hope you understood. Anyways, uh, I'm going to use my favorite Shine Supply Classic Cut. It has some great cutting capabilities. I, at first I thought of using a microfiber cutting pad but I don't want to go too aggressive. So I'm going to use my blue coast pad by Rupes and a uh, few drops of classic cut by Shine Supply. Call over the shoulders. still see those scratches they are quite deep and I can actually see the depth you can actually see the depth through the light and uh, the paint thickness is too low and I don't want to go sanding the surface and then compound again and finish it because I want to retain the thickness of the paint Mm. Well, I just want to go one more compounding step. I'll repeat once again. 
You see those scratches? They're actually very, very deep. Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna try to correct these scratches. I'll just try compounding one more time and let's see. I hope you can see how deep the scratch is. Just, just take a look at this light over here. You see the whole scratch and then a beam of light in between the scratch. As I move my lens up and down, you can see the light travels along the scratch up and down. So that indicates the depth, the depth of the scratch. It's actually quite deep, just like um, just like my the space between my two fingers. It's quite deep like this. So the light falls in between and it travels along the scratch. Anyway, I'll try to correct that with uh, one more stage of compounding. And if I can't, I think I should go sand the surface down. But before that, I'll make sure I take a reading around the spot take average reading and um, start sending accordingly let's see once again classic cut couple of drops i usually take enough compound so that i don't run dry pad on the surface caught over the shoulder Polish. I went for a few extra passes this time and uh, I still couldn't move. Let's wipe and check it out. Yeah, still there. visible from a distance of two feet but as I get close to it I can still see the depth they are actually quite deep and I just can't exactly say how deep they are so I'm just worried about um, whether I should go ahead and sand those scratches or just leave them as such because obviously they are not visible uh, they won't be visible if you get close to it and just spot them but um, the thing is they are too deep way too deep way too deep anyway the goal here is to maintain the clear coat as much as possible and I don't want to go more aggressive on this. I thought I would go sanding down the surface, but now I think I might be wrong. And uh, the overall paint thickness being around on an average of 117 or 115, I don't think that's a good idea. But they really bother me. Yeah, can you see that? A deep line still there I have no idea whether you can feel the depth just by looking at it but I'm sure my camera can't capture but with my naked eyes I can literally see the depth in there okay focus lost regaining focus yeah All right. Well, that's bothering me. This is a 3000 grit wet sanding paper. And uh, I think I'm going to take the risk and sand the surface. Before that, let me measure the thickness around the spot so that uh, I'll get mentally prepared about how rough I should go. Yeah, let me show you.
Okay, I'm going to cut a couple of microns there and let's see if I can get through the scratch and remove that. Let me once again measure the paint thickness. Let me grab my camera and show you guys. This is the portion I sanded. As we saw, there was a big scratch from here to here. Let's check the thickness once again. is left. Cool. That's enough. Let's compound the surface and check for the results. Cool. Finally. Job done. No more scratch. Those circular marks you see, those are compounding marks, and uh, these marks will uh, get corrected with the finishing compound, so that's not an issue. I don't see the scratch here anymore. That deep scratch. Whoa. Okay. So, thumbs up. Success. Wait. Before that, let me check the thickness once again. It was somewhere here, right? Uh, I see some some scratches here, but uh, those are not those deep scratches. They are uh, compounding marks. They'll just get corrected with the finishing compound. Cool. We retained. Go. Cool. Win-win situation, bro. Okay, so that was fun. We removed the scratch while retaining the paint thickness. 
so I've got a lot more to do. It's almost 12.30 a.m. And uh, I think the rest of the panel just needs a finishing compound polishing and uh, we'll get the job done soon. Stay tuned. Whoa, look at the paint now. It's great. No swirls or scratches anymore. And It just looks awesome. I love it. Um, I think there are a few swirl marks here left. Can you, can you, can you just see? See around this, um, the light. You can see. I think I should repeat around the Kia patch. Uh, yeah, I should repeat. I'll get my mini 3 inch polisher and repeat one step polishing over here. Okay. No more swirls around the batch. Corrected and enhanced. So this is what I call paint correction of detailing. Let me focus on the glitters. Wow, it's amazing. It's amazing, literally. I have no idea how the camera is capturing, but uh, this whole thing looks great. Black looks great. Awesome reflection. Okay, too excited to add a protective layer on the paint surface and that's also going to boost the shine as well as it's going to protect the paint. Mm. The only thing that's bothering me right now is this paint chip. I hope you guys can see here. Let me get that into focus. Yeah, this paint chip. Oops, this one. Can you guys see that? Rock chip. This is rock chip. Yes, now you can guys see clearly. That's a rock chip. Mm. The only way to fix that is um, I should either fill in paint, black pearl paint. Uh, let me check my inventory. I have this, which is noble black black paint um you have this one this dot let's try filling that with this black paint i just hope we match the color this is the black paint this is actually it has those pearls in it and i'm gonna go old school so here's a toothpick this one's sharpened mm. let's see this little guy over here great it did match and um, it's filling it's filling in as you can see there's no more white spot there and 
I guess I'll have to polish it one more time after that fully gets dried up. Cool. So guys, I'm done with the hood now and it almost took me about, it's almost 2.30 in the morning. It took me about uh, four and a half hours. <laughs> I know it's uh, way too long to be working on a single panel, but I was chasing perfection there because uh, this has come for a signature detailing job and uh, I literally take time, work panel by panel, section by section and try to work on all those little imperfections and make the car look uh, like a show car. So I'm trying to lay down a show car finish on this car. So it's gonna take way more time than you imagine. It took me about four and a half hours for a single panel. I just can't imagine how much time I'll be taking more for the rest of the car. Anyway. Uh, I just filled up a rock chip with black paint it just matches with the color and uh, uh, it will take about 20 25 minutes for it to fully get cured um, I'm gonna have my little I'm gonna have a little drink by then to keep me going for the rest of the night and the morning and let's see how that uh, paint fill up turns out uh, just the car, the paint looks awesome, right? Perfect mirror. Anyways, thank you, thanks for watching. That and a lot more coming up on my future episodes of Finance and Preserve. Stay tuned. Bye bye.